Well, hi everybody, it is uh, Karen and Tinks here with the Pets Page Show. And my special guest uh, today is Ellie Dorak. Hello, Hi, Ellie. Hi. It's great to be here. Yeah, Ellie is actually a friend of mine, and she Ooh. was just, uh, her and her pet Gus were just featured in, um, going to be featured in the documentary that we're doing to increase awareness about uh, veterinary specialists and also to encourage um, general vets to work together with their, with the specialists when needed if it's in the best interest of our pets. And so I was very excited that Ellie, but Ellie joined us, going to join us on that. And um, and she has a story about, I'm going to, um, about Gus and how kind of some things uh, took place with Gus, and so he's a Vishla. <laughs> yeah, Gus is a Vishla, which is a Hungarian pointer. They look a lot like Weimaraners, except they're red. Yeah, he's beautiful, beautiful. We got some great shots of him out there playing with the playing with the the little was it a frisbee? Yeah, a frisbee today. So we'll have some pictures, I'm sure, showing up here for y'all. But um, so anyway, if you could tell us about what happened to Gus. Well, about I don't know a year and a half ago, Gus mm -hmm. started occasionally limping, uh, favoring his right rear leg, and it got worse over time, and then it would get better, and then we would take him out and it would get worse, mm -hmm. so we took him to the um, our regular vet, and they couldn't really find anything wrong with him, and but yet he was still limping, so they suggested that we go to West Vet mm -hmm. and see a, a specialist there, Dr. Murphy, who's a surgeon, and it took a while because dogs can't talk, you know, yeah. and he could, they could, we couldn't figure out what was wrong and at first we were worried about prostate, so that turned out fine, and then we were worried about his spine and or his hips, but luckily the x-rays were clear on that too. So he did some MRIs of his leg. We determined it was coming from his so leg. So he was just not able to walk well, or what was he doing? He was doing? just limping. I was just limping. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and he's not a, using yeah, that a big dog that loves to be active. So it was definitely yeah. affecting the quality of his life and of y'all's life, because I know y'all are very active with your yeah. with your dogs as well. So yeah, I'm sure it probably bothered you a good bit. Yeah, and you know he's like my little guy. And yeah. <laughs> not, oh, he's 66 pounds, so he's not so little. Yeah. But I love yeah. him so much and. <laughs> So at any rate, finally after doing an MRI uh, of his leg, mm -hmm. MRI, yeah, um, he found a hairline fracture in his ankle. So really the treatment was just, you know, to put a cast on it and try and keep him as chilled out as possible, which was hard yeah. for a couple months, <laughs> but um, just finding out what it was and being able to give him what he needed was huge. That's, that's great. And so how old is Gus? Gus is six. He's six, and so he suffered with this when he was around five or so whenever he started. And yeah. so he's gonna hopefully live for many, many more good, good years. And so, yeah, thank goodness that Dr. Murphy was able to kind of to to find that. How long did that whole process kind of take? I know you you told me a little bit about it. Well, I mean, it took. You know, he, at first he said, well. It doesn't look like it's this, this, or this, and those are the main things to be concerned about, okay. like in terms of his immediate well-being. So you're like, well, good, but he's still yeah. living. What's going on? So then we, um, we, he said to try and keep him. He said rest him, mm -hmm. and then we had a good laugh because yeah. Dr. <laughs> Murphy has a vishla too, and they oh don't, yeah, they, they're, yeah. So, <laughs> but we resters. tried that for like another two weeks, okay. and then I took him back, and Dr. Murphy actually had me leave him with. Uh, him for the day one day and because he wanted to be able to walk with him and see how he observe walked him. and observe him over time and then um, you know we looked at we did the MRIs and luckily we have veterinary um, insurance so we were able to afford to do that because it's not exactly free yeah no yeah. exactly they're, they're they're highly yeah. highly specialized and trying to, uh, and trained it so it, it definitely yeah. does as with human medicine it, it, it does cost cost money so so that is wonderful that it's right. great to have veterinary insurance that is for sure I know I was glad that I, I did have that with tanks so. well and the, the, the veterinary specialists mm -hmm. you know of course, have to charge money, but a lot of the diagnostics. Yeah. So we were able to say yes to the diagnostics yeah. instead of having to yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So no, that's wonderful. And now Gus is just happy and healthy, and, and, and runs all around and enjoys a good quality of life. Yeah. And I know that y'all have a lot of fun with him. So I mentioned, kind of hinted that you have a couple of pets. So we've got Gus, who's the six and a half year old Bishla, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, we have an English pointer named Sophie, and she is three. She's a real, real little baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's 32 pounds or so, yeah. um, and she's very active also. They're both hunting dogs. And we have a almost 12-year-old pit bull named Raisin. Yeah. yeah, and Raisin's had two 
Um, well, several brushes with veterinary care, two knee surgeries, Ooh. yeah, and uh, and then she saw Dr. Murphy for her feet are arthritic, and we were hoping he could make her some little shoes, you know, oh. that would help support oh. her feet. And if we'd gotten her in earlier, yeah, we might have been able to. And in fact, she may, she has something going on that causes this like. Arthritis that might have also caused her knees to blow out. So, so if you could have gotten some treatment when she was, uh, uh -huh, when yeah, she was if we had known when she was a kid, but it, yeah. of course she never told us anything hurt because she's a pit bull. Yeah, you know? she didn't let you know what, yeah. was, what was going on. Yeah, yeah. So you definitely have a, have a lot of, a lot of big dogs, and I know mm -hmm. you. I know like a lot of our like a lot of uh, other pet our pet lovers and other pet owners are definitely such a part of our family. Yeah. And for sure, kind of like as if they're your children, right, yeah. Tiggs? That's why we got the 50 year model instead of the, you know, 12 year model dogs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I did, so how did you kind of do that? Because I know you have all, all the pets, um, the big dogs, got always things going on with them. And sometimes I know they're, they're out hunting and they get into this or into that. And so how do you kind of determine? You have your general vet, I'm sure. And then you also know that, that you know, Dr. Murphy is a board certified uh, a veterinary surgeon that is here. Here, and there's also kind of several other specialists that are that are there um, that we're fortunate to have here in our town. So how do you kind of how do you handle all your health care for your pets? Well, our, our general vet is our go-to person. They know our dogs. Our dogs are okay with them. Um, Raise and loves them, and <laughs> you know they they manage their medical records. So I know that um, someone's keeping an eye on them. Yeah. Uh, we go there for. Pretty much anything that happens during the day on the weekdays when they're open, <laughs> yeah. they're open Saturday as well, and um, and then times when they're not able to either diagnose or treat what's going on. So um, it seems that hunting injuries, lacerations from barbed wire, always happen in evenings and weekends. Mm. <laughs> so we've gone to Westfed a lot, although certainly they, they could handle that.